Welcome to another Combustion Chamber Live. We are here at Cars and Coffee Central Florida, a great car show for a great cause. Plus, we have a lot of really awesome McLarens that showed up today, as well as just about anything and everything you can think of. Let's get after it. All right, let's get things started off with a featured car. What I mean by featured car is that when I post before coming to a show and say, hey, shoot me a message and I'll give your car a little extra attention, that's exactly what I mean. And this gentleman did it. This is his new Lamborghini Huracan 6104. That means 610 horsepower, all wheel drive, beautiful and white. He previously owned a black one, if I'm, if I'm uh, not mistaken. See your 6104 badging down there. Absolutely beautiful car, beautiful engine, engine babe. With that, that texture, that style of the short fiber technology, of course, packed with that beautiful and very powerful V10. I really love Lamborghini cars. I'm sure y'all have noticed that by now. But uh, these things are just getting better and better. You've got an outstanding car like this, which on its own is fantastic. And now you've got the Evo version of it and the Evo Spider, which they announced this week. But just take a look at how beautiful that car looks in white, especially with the black wheels and the red calipers and in the back with the red accents there. Really, really gorgeous car. I love it. Now, if you've been a long time watcher of the show, this rat rod should look very familiar. We did an episode on it for the show and this is handmade. It's a lot of hard work, but some rat rods are really well made and some are potential widow makers. This, however, is not one of them. This is expertly made, really well done. It is safe as well to drive, but it's got a lot of power. We had it on the show. I'll put a link in the description below. As you can see, the metal work, the fabrication that goes into making something like this, especially on this one, is really beautiful. And it was a blast to drive it for the show. And I'm really glad to see that the owner's out here today. Come back around, get you a little bit more views. Which gets very popular. And I like it because it's the only vehicle of its kind out here today. You know, I like the unique stuff. And I also like seeing uh, people that have been on the show. So, like I said, I'll put a link right down below for you all to check out the, the episode on this wrap. All right, something that's really special about today's Cars and Coffee is the McLaren Meetup. So as you can see, we're gonna go down this entire row of McLarens. There's a lot here today. Of course, we have an MP4 12C right here which I've had the pleasure of never driving but riding in it, and at the time this car came out, it, well, it's still awesome. But really, really fantastic. And look at the beautiful, this orange, pearl, metallic paint job, and I always love this color. Uh, I, I think I've shot this car before, but in any case, it's still just really stunning, and I like McLaren's take on interiors. They're, they're not overstated. You know, it's it's pretty to the point, and that's that's what I like. Get you a front shot here. Of some of these beautiful, beautiful cars. Now, there's a reason why there is such an emphasis on McLaren here at the show today. And once we get down to that end of the line, I'm going to uh, to to show you why. Of course, we have 570 GT here. Once again, an outstanding car. McLaren really kind of knocks it out of the park when they when they put. Uh, when they, when, when they put their, their, their all into these cars, which they do on every car, it's pretty wild. I've gotten up close with the McLaren Senna as well, and that was nice. Here's a 570S. Oh, get by that door. It smells really nice too. I can smell the, the smell of the leather. It's, you know, I have that thing with how the interiors of cars smell. One of the things I like about McLaren is supercars are not known for being able to see out the back. And McLaren really puts a lot of thought into being able to back up the car or just see behind you in traffic. So they get the engine nice and low for nice rearward visibility. But we'll see that even in greater display on the 720S, which is right here. There's two 720S cars out here today. One is brought out by uh, McLaren of Tampa Bay with the same representative that we had in one of our Festivals of Speed episodes. Very nice gentleman, incredibly knowledgeable about the vehicle. And I learned a lot just interviewing him 
about about the car. And what I mean by visibility all the way around. You see that it's all glass with carbon fiber uh, support, but you can see right out the back, and the engine sits a little bit lower, and you have much greater visibility than you would in some of your other supercars. Of course, I love the 720S, but in this orange color, I don't know the exact name, but it is beautiful. Um, would you mind if I put the camera in there? Just yeah, thank you, That's the gentleman I was telling you about earlier that we interviewed at Festivals of Speed, but I want you to see that visibility out of the back there where you have thin pieces of carbon fiber supporting the structure, but you have all this great visibility that you really don't get in a lot of other supercars. Once again, they have a beautiful but restrained interior. It's kind of, it's not overly in your face. And of course that uh, right there will actually fold out or stay in that position depending on what your preference is while you're driving. And it's 720S, 720 horsepower. So you're getting a car that is more drivable, but has, you know, horsepower and torque numbers that are right up there with any other supercar manufacturer. So, and I absolutely, absolutely love it in that stunning orange. Now, why is our big McLaren turnout? Well, this 570S is owned by a guest of the show. He had the 911 Turbo, right? And he got rid of the Porsche and got a McLaren, and he's absolutely in love with it. He has uh, nothing but good things to say about it. So he got a McLaren, so he put a big emphasis on getting all the McLaren folks out here, and it's just a, it's a fantastic turnout. I have to say, though, my favorite McLaren right now is the 720S. Uh, I, just, I just think they've nailed the design uh, perfectly with performance, looks, and drivability. So I'm a big, big fan. All right, right here, right here we have an Audi R8, the second generation. Beautiful car, these come with a V10 or V8 option. Really nice car, this one's in all white. Sometimes that, where that intake for air, usually that's an exposed carbon fiber or a different color. This one happens to be painted to match the body of the car. Very, very nice ride that's out here today. But we can't forget about classic American muscle. We have a Mustang Fastback. Now, I don't know what the factory name for this green is, but I always call it Bullet Green. Uh, obviously, after the, the famous film starring Steve McQueen. Get you another shot of that beautiful Fastback there. Like I said, I love that green. Very much like the film Bullet. Very nice indeed. Now, let's go behind Deus here. They've got their, their setup here explaining all the quality work that they do. But they have an Audi. R8 out here as well. This is another second generation. And like I pointed out on the other the other R8, you know, they have the painted carbon fiber piece, but this one is exposed. Right there. And of course, this is the V10 powered version. Get a look at that interior there with the red and black two-tone. Very nice. Really slick car and very powerful. Get a full shot of this for you all here. So you can take it all in. And we have a great Porsche turnout as well. We've got a GT3 here. You know, we had that 991 GT3 RS on the show. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Actually took it to the track where the car really comes alive at. And that was a lot of fun to drive. Both on the street and then watching what it was capable of on the track was awesome. Classic Porsche. You know, if you're if you're huge into Porsche, check out a movie called No Man's Land from the 80s. Now it's super 80s. It's got Charlie Sheen in it, but it's about a, 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 a people that are, are ripping off Porsches and stealing them and such. So uh, if you're really into into uh, 80s movies and Porsche, check that movie out. A lot of nice stuff here. A Boxster. A friend of mine has a Boxster very similar to this in color. Uh, I've driven it uh, a few times. I actually had the pleasure of driving it on the Formula One track in Austin, Texas. And these cars are great. I like that they, they can be stick shift or automatic. This one is a stick shift, which I think is great. Uh, convertible, which I really want a convertible car one day. But they're, they're nimble and they're agile and they're just a ton of fun to drive. And they're not huge cars. You know, when you drive old American muscle, which is always gonna be my favorite, you know, you're, it's like driving a land yacht sometimes, depending on the car, but these are really nimble and really fantastic. Now check this out, Ferrari 488. 
out here today. Beautiful, beautiful car. And I like the spec on this one. It's black, it's got darker wheels, but they're, they stand out just enough. Got a nice Challenger taking off here. Come back around. Get you a shot of that red interior, that gorgeous red interior. Of course, the GTB standing for Gran Turismo Berlinetta. But what I mean by the nice, the wheel and tire combo on this car, I think that looks really nice on the black, especially with those red calipers, which tie in a little bit to, to part of the logo, but definitely that gorgeous interior. And right here we have another Chevy SS. Now this, of course, has the Chevrolet bow tie still on it. It's my understanding, and I might be wrong about this, but this is what I've been told, is that there was an option that you could keep the bow tie on there or get the Holden Lion, which I think on this car, especially since it's designed by them, it definitely has their signature look. I would prefer the Lion. Of course, all three of these cars are LS3 powered cars. Very nice. Look at this piece of junk. Who would drive one of these old things? It's so bland and boring looking. Well, I drive one of these things. This is my Pontiac GTO or Holden Monero. And I absolutely love a car. This is uh, 2004, so it's LS1 power. It has SLP headers uh, and pipe and resonators. No cats, no mufflers, full can and intake. As you can see, it has 05 and 06 red calipers, aftermarket brakes, me, my dad, and a gentleman named Felipe uh, helped us with that. This is actually my daily driver. This car has so much powerful, but is so reliable with that LS motor that I drive this car every single day. And the interior is in pretty good shape, uh, especially for a daily, so you don't have a bunch of tears and stuff like that. Of course, I take care of the, the leather. I treat it and such, but I uh, absolutely love the car. And it's, it's one of my, my probably best auto purchases. Of course, I don't buy a lot of cars because I don't have that kind of money. We have one of my favorite generations of Camaro, the fourth gen. I say it's one of my favorite generations, but I love all generations of Camaro. Now, through 98 to 2002, they were LS1 powered cars. So it's 5.7 liter, aluminum block, aluminum heads. This has SLPs, uh, aftermarket, airbox. Now, there's something that a lot of people do that I've even done on my fourth gen F body. Now, this is an SS, so it's got the functional hood. You can see the vents right there and then air feeds in there like that. So it's already got something functional. But if you don't have that kind of hood, they have something called under the hood ram air that you could install. So what you do is you cut into this bottom right here and install a stainless steel scoop and you'd be able to see it right there and brings in air from the bottom. That's what I did to my fourth gen, which I still have and I love it and I have no intention of parting with it. Yeah, it's a V6, only got like 215 horsepower, but I don't care. I love the car, I love cruising in it, I love T-tops. And right next to it is a fifth gen Camaro. It's got really cool uh, lights or built into the headlights, changing colors. Love the really dark gray metallic. Great looking car. So you've got two generations of Camaros represented here. And of course the fifth and sixth generation Camaros even in their V6 form, have so much more power than the previous generation. Right here, we have a 5.0 Mustang. And the reason why I'm highlighting this one is, once again, like the Lamborghini we saw earlier, if you respond to me on social media, whether that's Facebook or Instagram, and I say, hey, I'm going to a show, would you like your car to receive a little extra attention? That's what I do. So he just purchased this car. It's beautiful and white. Looks like he's uh, modified the, the grill there a little bit. And we come around here, of course it's tinted, it's got his Instagram handle right there. People still say handle, like you know, like CB radios, I don't know, I do. And this aftermarket spoiler right here. So pretty new car, but uh, definitely clean. I like, one of the things I like on cars is right around the exhaust tips, you see how that whole bottom piece is painted? You know, a lot of car manufacturers, they keep that uh, 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 a sort of a flat black plasticky color and I like that this one is painted uh, I don't know if that's an option or, or, or how that's all decided if it just comes with the GT but I like that that is painted I've never been a fan of that body cladding kind of look but I'm really glad that this guy reached out he's got a really nice looking <laughs> car and of course he's here with like-minded individuals so lots and lots of Mustangs here today always a group that comes out in force so check it out, we have beautiful Ford 
hatchback here, RS. There was a little bit more of these guys here earlier, but they already took off before I could film all of them. And that's a shame because one of them was a Ford Fiesta that reached out to me uh, to, to have his car featured. But he's already gone. He was parked, he was parked here. And now he's, he's not here, and I want to feature him because he, he subscribed to the channel, which is what all of you should do, and he really enjoyed the content, so I wish I could have featured him, but he's gone already. But we have this beautiful car here, and these are really awesome. I believe they come in front or all-wheel drive, and I think some of them were manufactured in Germany, if I'm not mistaken. Unfortunately, Ford is not selling cars anymore in the States uh, like they used to. It's going to be trucks and crossovers and, and the Mustang, so it's a shame to see cars like this go because they have a really enthusiastic and loyal following and this has a beautiful blue pearl paint on it I mean it's a nice looking car so I'm sorry my man that I did I, that I missed you but I, I you left <laughs> uh, which is unfortunate but that's okay I, I'll, I'll catch that guy on the next round so we have a c7 sting right here LT1 powered car really nice in this maroon color with the polished five spoke wheels you know these cars when they first came out people were like they either loved it or they hated it they were really kind of up in arms about the especially the tail light design let's go take a look at that so and i don't mind it i think it looks fine uh I, i'm not a purist and i like new ideas and this is one of the ideas that i think is okay but what do you think about the current c7 you know let me know in the comment section below and if you like what you see hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes like this and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, sometimes Twitter. And if you really love us, check us out on Patreon. Also, photos from the show will be on uh, Instagram and the full album will be on our Facebook page. And right here, we saw a fourth gen earlier. We have another one right here that is in, in really good condition. Uh, it's got aftermarket five spoke wheels, painted calipers. It's got the stripes. Of course, he has the functional SS hood, the LS1. And I, if I'm not mistaken, there's that under the hood ram air so like i pointed out on the other car that didn't have this you see that aluminum right there instead of it just being a black piece of plastic i have this under the hood air intake on my fourth gen as well which feeds into the air box so you've got air coming in from the functional hood and you've got cooler air coming in from the bottom so that's a really nice touch and i've installed one of those myself and and it, it was a lot of fun with a, with a, with a good friend of mine Get you a wide shot of this gorgeous, modified, and, and really well taken care of fourth gen. And we spin around here. We've got a fifth gen Corvette with a custom flame paint job. Pretty wild. Can't can't help but uh, help but see it going down the road. Pretty neat stuff. Pretty good paint work. I, I know I don't have a hand that steady. Not at all. And right next to it, a gorgeous, gorgeous classic Chevelle. We saw one uh, at another combustion chamber live that was very much a resto mod. And this is too, but it's 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 a, just a little different take on it. Of course, it is uh, powered by a modern LS3 engine, but the, there's not a lot of fabrication around the engine. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you go back and check out that other video that was um, uh, Cars and Coffee Palm Beach, you know, it has the it had the the custom metal work that came in and kind of covered a lot of things. Or just cleaned up the interior. Of course, the interior uh, engine compartment on this is super clean and very, very nice. And his interior is, is something else. Both cars uh, were 1967s. It's really nice. Just enough touch of modern and classic, and I think it really, really sets the car off. Now, here's a car that I really love. You know that I really, really love my Aston Martins, and here is an Aston Martin Vantage with a 4.7 liter V8 outstanding car I really like it I hope to get one one day as you can see the final inspection has the gentleman's name on it hand built in England I've had the pleasure of touring their production facility which I'm gonna go into uh, in a little bit more depth uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a new thing we have coming up but I will be announcing that very clean interior of course everybody who has an Aston Martin takes care of it but I want to show you something that's pretty cool and the owner was uh, cool enough to keep this open to show people but here you have your traveling kit right here so that is uh, that's pretty wild and a, and a really neat option of course also has the Aston Martin umbrella so uh, I recently had a Vulcan poster frame that I purchased while I was at uh, Aston Martin in England and then you come over here we have another Aston Martin the Vantage S 
with those red Aston Martin calipers, just really that real nice little accent, that touch there. Once again, a V8 powered car, uh, fantastic. I really like this car a lot. I really, really do. <laughs> and a Maserati GT. Now this happens to be a convertible. We did have one on our show that was a hard top, a lot of fun to drive. Uh, Ferrari provides the engines for these and uh, the V8s. Now they're not the flat, uh, flat crank that comes in, let's just say an F430. Uh, it is a modified engine, but still plenty of power, quality build. And you have this gorgeous interior with this really nice blue gauges. And right here we have probably one of the wildest rides at today's show, a first generation MR2 that has been turned into a rally car. Now we've had a first gen MR2 on our show and it was in beautiful, pretty much flawless condition, right? But this one is modified for something totally different. So as you can see, this thing is, is purpose built. Now some people say, oh, why is it so dirty? Well, it's a rally car. Okay, it's not about it's not about looks per se, but it's about getting the job done. But what's neat is they have these stickers all over the car. I was talking to the owner earlier, and him and his daughter picked the, picked the stickers. And so you've got Princess Leia there, and Hello Kitty. You've got uh, Archer over here. You can see the engine in the back there, and of course what used to be a little trunk in the back, however. Uh, no longer there. One of the things about rally cars is you want to reduce weight. So that's why you take out everything you don't need. So really neat. I'm glad this is out here today. Uh, I think it's I think it's wild. I think it's unique. And it's it's something else. And definitely a showstopper. And here's something I'm really excited to see out here today is two Kia Stingers. I know there were some other Stingers here earlier, but I don't know if they've moved or taken off. But I like this car a lot. Rear wheel drive engine in the front looks really cool not something you would expect from a car manufacturer like Kia but uh, they've really stepped up their game with this car I've talked to a lot of Stinger owners and they all love them I'm glad to see more and more of these out here I'm glad to see that they're catching on uh, with car enthusiasts because they're pretty wild and I'd actually like to get one on the show sometime just to see how it handles you know these kind of remind me of uh, the Pontiac G8 you know there was a lot of young families that wanted uh, you know, they, they had their first kid, but they wanted a four-seater car, but they wanted a fun one, so they got the Pontiac G8. Well, now this car has kind of taken the place of that. With I've seen some young families behind the wheels, just, just some young car enthusiasts. But what is interesting about these is they're selling like gangbusters in Australia. Like I said, Holden shut down. They're not making cars anymore like the, the Commodore, which is rear-wheel drive with the engine in the front. It's a sedan, four doors. Well... These are, have taken the place of that. These are outselling the current Commodore, which is a front wheel drive car that enthusiasts are not too particularly thrilled with. I, I have to say I'm not either, but these are selling real great in Australia because they're filling that market gap that the Commodore uh, left, unfortunately, when GM decided to, to stop uh, production of Holden vehicles. Now they're simply an importer. And we have a, a nice surprise today. I didn't know if this owner was gonna come out or not. But this is another Audi R8 with the V10. As you can see, it's got the matte black on it, the red accents, the aftermarket wheels. And of course, the V10, love it, right? Plenty of power, it's a great looking car. But my favorite part, right there, that stick shift. So maybe you'll see this in a future episode of Combustion Chamber. We are working on season three right now. We're currently in production on that. And on a cool surprise, we're gonna be announcing within the next couple of weeks. In a past video, I said 2019 is gonna be, be a big year for the show. That's because, of course, of people who support the show like y'all, but also new projects and things that we have in the works. So if you wanna stay, stay connected, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon on YouTube for those notifications. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, sometimes Twitter. If you really love us, check us out on Patreon. Now check this out. We have the Mercedes-Benz GTS, of course, made by the AMG wing of Mercedes, which as you well know, is their performance division. Listen to that American Buffalo division. And we got the Mopar guys here.
those guys are really nice and uh, fans of the show. So here we are with the Mercedes. It got distracted by that, that good old American power there. Uh, twin turbo V8 in this one, or they call it bi turbo. Uh, they also provide a twin turbo uh, engine for Aston Martin. And of course, AMG also offers uh, or manufactures an engine for Pagani. So AMG is a, a, a big, multifaceted, and very advanced uh, team of people and facilities. But this car is really beautiful. It has a huge, huge nose on it, but definitely like this car. So we started today with a Lamborghini Huracan. Let's close it out with a Lamborghini Huracan. This is the rear wheel drive version of the car. Of course, still has the V10. There's no different engine options on this one. Beautiful pearl blue color. Right, right. Try to get you a good shot of that nice up and close. You can kind of see that pearl blue, how it really, really looks stunning in the daylight. And the two tone interior here, which I really love. I'm a huge fan of uh, Lamborghini, but also their interiors. I think they're really dramatic. They're kind of fighter jet. You know, you've got your uh, fighter jet style button there. Looks like you're about to launch a, a, a rocket and a MiG, but uh, really nice. Really nice to see this out here today, and I think it looks really nice with those matte black wheels. There. So we started with a hurricane, and we're closing it out with a hurricane. I hope you enjoyed today's Combustion Chamber Live. I certainly know that I did, and this is a great show. And for those of you that responded to our social media requests uh, to, to feature your car individually, thank you very much. If you want your car to get a little extra love, make sure to keep up with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, of course, right here. And if you really love us, support us on Patreon. And I want to thank all of you once again, because without your continued support, we don't have a show. So thank you all very much. Thank <laughs> you.